Let's talk about the Naruto iceberg, the iceberg that contains the greatest mysteries and theories in Naruto. I've already seen a lot of videos breaking down icebergs for different topics. But as far as I know, there's not much about Naruto. In case you don't know, the iceberg video format is a system of levels starting with popular and mainstream theories and mysteries of a certain topic. The tip of the iceberg that everyone knows and then moving deeper towards the wildest and darkest theories the internet has to offer. Starting with tier number one. Let's begin tier one with the most popular theory, which is the infinite Tsukuyomi has never ended. This theory states that Madara defeated team seven and put them under the Tsukuyomi. In the Tsukuyomi, Naruto dreams another outcome of his fight with Madara. He wins and becomes Hokage, but it's all a dream. The actual ending we see in the anime didn't happen in real life, but in a dream world. Madara successfully activated the infinite Tsukuyomi, which we all know. However, after the light was cast and Sasuke blocked its effects with his Suzanu, and this is where the theory begins. You see, after the Tsukuyomi took effect, Team 7 hid in Sasuke's Suzanu. After its effects wore off and it was safe to come out, Madara battled his only opposers. We must keep in mind that at this point, Madara was immortal, was a Ten-Tails Jinchuriki, was a Rinnegan user, and had Senjutsu cells. He was god-level with unlimited power, and so even Team 7 couldn't handle him, because they're only human. They wouldn't have been able to seal him, because unlike Kaguya, Madara is faster and much more alert. He's a warrior, with battle experience and eyes that see everything. So Madara defeats Team 7 using brute force in a matter of minutes, if that. So what next? So after Madara defeats humanity's last hope, his dream comes true. Everyone is now under the infinite Tsukuyomi and peace has been established. Madara did defeat Team 7, but he doesn't kill them. No, that would be too easy. He wants them to enjoy his dream world like everyone else, and so that's what he does. He puts Team 7 under the Tsukuyomi. This is sad because Naruto's dream of becoming Hokage is never fulfilled, but wait. Naruto can still become Hokage in the dream world, and that's what happens. Naruto goes on to fight Kaguya in a very unrealistic battle. Dimensions are switched, but yet despite the odds, they overcome it. Naruto is even able to land his famous reverse harem jutsu. Naruto has always wanted to beat Sasuke, and the last time they fought, he lost. So in his dream, he fights Sasuke one last time, and they clash, just like the first time. Coincidence? As they nearly bleed out, Sasuke admits defeat, and Naruto can finally keep his promise of bringing Sasuke home. It's a dream come true. All the pieces are falling into place for a happily ever after. Naruto saves Sasuke, he saves the world, he becomes Hokage, and the peace Jiraiya dreamed of finally occurs. It's quite interesting that Naruto's ambition of being Hokage would perfectly match his Tsukuyomi dream if he were defeated. That's why this theory works. How can we know he wasn't defeated? How do we know Naruto didn't dream all of this after his defeat by Madara? Can you imagine Naruto losing? That's exactly why everyone readily accepts the outcome of the Naruto story. Naruto was destined to win, but if you look at it realistically, Naruto should have died a long time ago. The fact he became Hokage is truly a fairy tale, a dream come true. Notice how perfect everything goes in Boruto, no wars, no major villains. Naruto is OP, Sasuke returns, but actually nothing in Boruto is perfect. Have you read or watched it? They're experiencing complete chaos everywhere, both in universe and on the creator's side. They created and released the Jogan before even coming up with what it actually is, does, and flat out told fans, don't worry about it. And they definitely have major villains. They are facing an Otsutsuki invasion right now and are just learning that Kaguya was barely the tip of the iceberg. So things in Boruto are far from perfect, but that is definitely a good theory and, and totally makes sense. If the series just ended with Naruto being Hokage, I would definitely agree. I had wanted to believe that in the past, actually that things didn't end in a happy note. And Sasuke does get pardoned to some degree and finds some semblance of happiness with Sakura and is finally seeing the revival of his clan. Jashin is an Otsutsuki. I've been thinking a lot recently about why did the anime show had an arc dedicated to Jashin and after connecting all the dots, it finally makes sense. It was foreshadowing that Jashin will be related to Kara and Otsutsuki. Okay, let's start from the beginning. The first theory was that Hidan never died in Shippuden and later will return in Boruto as one of the members of Kara. Forget about Hidan being resurrected in the movie. Naruto movies are not legit except the last one. Boruto anime is never useless and everything there happens for a reason. So when Jashin Ark was released, it was thought it was a foreshadow for the future that Hidan was also coming back. Now it's different. 
The manga revealed that Strength of a Hundred Seal has Otsutsuki origin as it was made during the Sage of Six Paths era, making me believe that Hidan's immortality has also Otsutsuki origin. The final theory stands that the so-called Jashin, who Hidan worshipped, was actually one of the previous vessels of Ishiki Otsutsuki like Jigen. Both Jigen and Jashin were the vessels of Ishiki Otsuki used for reincarnation. Ishiki Otsutsuki, while in the body of Jashin, studied immortality. At the beginning, he probably wanted to achieve immortality through the use of strength of a hundred seal, but when that failed, he tried to achieve immortality through using sacrifices. Anyway, the origin of Jashin will finally be revealed in Boruto as it was foreshadowed by the anime arc, and we will finally get to see more unique jutsus originating from Otsutsuki, such as famous curse technique, death controlling possessed blood. Raman Gai was Minato's teammate. In a flashback scene, we get a glimpse of Team Jiraiya, and one of the boys in the group bears an uncanny resemblance to the Raman Gai. Although the facial structure and skin tone are notably different, it can be explained by the possibility that the boy was much younger at the time. Furthermore, both characters share the same type of eyes, which are always squinting. This is a rare feature among the canon characters, and it's enough to make the theory of them being one and the same plausible. Another factor that supports this idea is that Raman Gai was the only non-ninja adult who didn't discriminate against Naruto, who was a Jinchuriki. It's been established that all the civilians except for Raman Gai despised Naruto. The theory that Raman Gai was Minato's teammate can neatly explain their relationship. Additionally, the girl in Team Jiraiya is speculated to be Mikoto, Sasuke's mother. The theory is supported by the fact that the girl has black hair and their ages match up. Lastly, it's worth noting that Orochimaru is seen with a student, Anko, but we don't see her other teammates. This could imply that Minato's teammates were important characters, and the most likely matches based on age and appearance are Raman Gai and Mikoto. Sasuke destroyed Obito's Sharingans. This refers to the stash of Sharingans we see Obito have in one of the Akatsuki hideouts. He presumably got them during the Uchiha massacre. We saw them on one page when Obito gave Sasuke Zitachi's eyes, but after that, we never see them again. The fate of the hideout is also not known for sure. We know that Anko did find where it was, so presumably after the war the place was investigated. If that's the case, then the Leaf would have been able to choose whatever they want to do with them, which would likely be destroy them. This theory proposes that Sasuke destroyed them when he left the hideout. After recovering from eye surgery, we saw a bunch of white Zetsu try to stop Sasuke from leaving and he quite literally busted out of the hideout with a Susano. As in, we see the entire outside of the hideout crack and shake when he bust out. So if the hideout collapsed because of this, those Sharingans would have been destroyed as a result. If they weren't destroyed, it's possible that Sasuke went back to the hideout after the war and personally destroyed it. Or when the leaf went back there, he was consulted on the matter and chose to have them destroyed. I personally think they were destroyed when Sasuke bust out of the mountain graveyard, considering that the entire hideout was violently shaking when he did so. And we have completed the first tier of Naruto Mystery Iceberg. Now let's dive down to the second tier, which will have more mysterious secrets and theories. Uzumaki clan lived in the land of waves. This is a very obscure, but very under-talked about theory. Something odd about the land of waves that it's never pointed out on a map. Despite us seeing a world map in that very arc, there's only one island next to the land of fire too. But this was confirmed by Kushina to be the land of whirlpools, which is where the Uzumaki clan lived. We know that the Uzumaki clan left the land of Eddies and spread out through the world due to their nation being destroyed in the Second Great Shinobi War. After the Uzumaki leave, we have zero information on what happened to the island. So this theory proposed that the land of whirlpools became the land of waves. There's a lot of evidence supporting this, actually. We know that the land of waves have no shinobis, and we know that the clan that ruled the land of whirlpools fled their country. Both of these nations were also close to the land of fire, too. If you compare the land of whirlpools on a map and the land of waves in a close-up map, they are shaped very similar. They both have the same general shape, and they're both sloped the same as well. The resemblance is uncanny, honestly, but the land of waves is shown to be an archipelago, while the land of whirlpools looks to be contiguous. It would be fair to chalk this out to being the land of whirlpools just being simplified on the world map, as it would look weird if you drew, like, ten small islands on a world map. 
it just wouldn't show up very well. The societal collapse of the land of whirlpools would also explain why the land of waves was constantly referred as a small and poor island nation. In this theory, the land of waves would have just had to restart their society after the ruling clan left it. I have two major problems with this theory, though. One is one piece of evidence being that we know that the Great Naruto Bridge extends west from the land of waves, so it must be on the east coast in the land of fire. This doesn't necessarily work because the east coast is massive, and even the southwestern part of the land of fire juts out into the ocean enough that there could be a bridge going west there too. The other discrepancy I have are the names. Why wouldn't Kishimoto just use the same name for both nations, or even say that the name was changed to the Land of Waves? However, this can be countered by this just being a retcon, as the two maps I compared earlier are almost 500 chapters apart. Overall, I think this theory has a lot of validity to it. There's only one island shown to be next to the Land of Fire, and considering how both countries are shaped almost the exact same, I think that would have to be intentional. Even better is that the Land of Waves have no shinobi in it, which would be explained by the Land of Whirlpool as having all their shinobi flee decades earlier. Madara copied Edo Tensei hand signs. During the war arc, Madara managed to break out of Edo Tensei right after Kabuto released it, much to everyone's surprise. Itachi forced Kabuto to do the hand signs to release Edo Tensei, but Madara countered by performing the signs of Edo Tensei to cancel it. Although it seems like a convenient plot twist, the question remains, how did Madara learn these signs? The jutsu was developed by Tobirama and became a forbidden technique, at least in part one. There is no way Tobirama would have shared it with Madara, and Zetsu likely didn't tell him either. Madara expected to be brought back with Rinna Rebirth instead of Edo Tensei, but he was familiar with Edo Tensei, as he remarked while dropping a meteor on the Shinobi Alliance. The original purpose of Edo Tensei was to take down others with you. If Zetsu and Tobirama didn't tell Madara, then the only possible explanation is that Madara copied the hand signs from Tobirama. During a battle against the Senju, he may have copied them, hoping it could lead to him learning how to do it himself. However, the reason why he knew these signs is still a mystery. It's unlikely that Kishimoto thought of a reason why he knew these signs, as it would have only been explained in one panel if there was a simple way. The only realistic way he could have learned is through copying the signs, using his Sharingan to observe Tobirama's hand movements. Orochimaru stole his outfit. I find this one to be hilarious. When Orochimaru was fighting Team 7 in the Forest of Death, he was disguised as another Gainin in the entire fight. It was not a transformation jutsu either. He literally stole a girl's face right before the Forest of Death. But here's the weird thing. The corpse of the woman was wearing the same outfit as Orochimaru's normal outfit. So he didn't literally steal her outfit, but could have just had a different outfit that looked the exact same. But after he leaves the Force of Death, he never changes from that outfit, despite no longer needing to be disguised. So it's a really funny idea that Orochimaru loved his outfit so much that he's decided to wear it for several years afterwards. But this is sadly debunked. As in Kabuto's flashback, Orochimaru is wearing this outfit long before the Chunin exams. So more than likely, he told this woman to borrow his drip and then just killed her so he could still look fresh while being disguised as her. Why can't Rock Lee use ninjutsu? Have you ever wondered why Rock Lee can't seem to perform jutsu like other ninja in Naruto? While some might say that he simply lacked the talent for it or was born without the ability, there may be more to the story. After all, how could he learn an S-rank technique like the Eight Inner Gates if he couldn't use Chakra in some way? One theory is that the difference between Lee's ability to manipulate his own Chakra and his inability to create Jutsu is imagination. In Naruto's training for the Rasengan, he had to learn to both manipulate Chakra and envision the Jutsu in his hand. Lee may be able to walk on water and open up to five gates, but he struggles with visualizing jutsu. This could be due to a condition called aphantasia, which affects one's ability to imagine things. Aphantasia is often associated with autism, which may also explain some of Lee's extreme personality traits. For example, Lee's entire character revolves around his training, and he communicates differently than others, using formal language and being very serious. Another clue may be in Lee's eyes, which are perfect circles, unlike most other characters. 
While this theory is far from confirmed, it does offer an interesting perspective on why Lee might not be able to perform Jutsu and what that says about his character. And we have completed the second tier of Naruto Mystery Iceberg. Now let's dive down to the third tier, which will have more mysterious secrets and theories. Kabuto was actually a good guy. Kabuto was known as the loyal follower of Orochimaru, one of the main antagonists of the Naruto series. While there have been many instances where his loyalty was doubted, ultimately his origins were revealed that confirmed his status as an avid Orochimaru follower. However, Kabuto had also strangely helped Orochimaru's enemies many times without any valid reason. Because of Kabuto's actions, fans have made a theory about Kabuto being Jiraiya's spy. Since Jiraiya always seemed to have inside information about Orochimaru, fans have speculated that Kabuto had always been a good guy and secretly worked for Konoha. Naruto's lonely upbringing was pre-planned. Naruto was the son of the fourth Hokage, Minato Namikaze, who sacrificed himself to seal half of the Nine Tails Chakra inside Naruto. As a child, Naruto was abandoned by everyone because of the Nine-Tailed Fox trapped inside him. While growing up, Naruto craved for the love and attention of the villagers and aspired to be a Hokage and the protector of the village. Since Naruto was the son of the Hokage, it does seem strange that he was just ignored by everyone, even the third Hokage. Fans have raised questions about the possibility that this was done on purpose to make Naruto seek attention and love to create a hero out of him. Kinkaku and Ginkaku are related to Kaguya. This refers to the subtle moment where fourth Raikage estimates that the reason why they could eat nine-tailed chakra is because they were related to the sage of the sixth paths. I don't think this makes too much sense though, as Hagoromo's descendants Indra and Asura were the founders of the Uchiha and Senju clan. They're definitely not Uchiha and probably not Senju since the Senju went to the leaf. It would help explain how they got Hagoromo's treasure tools, though. They also have horns, which all Otsutsuki seem to have. I propose they aren't directly related to Hagoromo, but instead are members of the Kaguya clan. Hamura's descendants became the Hyuga clan, but the Kaguya clan was said to become straight from Kaguya, which actually makes it seem like Kaguya had another child that we just didn't know anything about. They also seemed like warmongers, since they assassinated the second Raikage for a peace deal with the leaf. Orochimaru said the Kaguya clan were savages that only enjoyed fighting and that's why they disappeared because they fought to their extinction. There are some counterpoints to this though. Kaguya clan members are shown to have red dots on their forehead but we don't see this because they would wear forehead protector. No other Kaguya clan member are shown to have horns either so their appearance doesn't match some of the law. Jiraiya wanted Conan. This one is a meme that is shared here and there, but I think it has a lot of validity to it. When Jiraiya said goodbye to his Rain Village students, he has an individual message for each student. He tells Yahiko not to cry because people will think he's a coward. He tells Nagato that it seemed like they had all grown up now. And then he tells Conan that she will grow up to be beautiful. And they should meet again one day. I've seen a few times where people have brought this up as a concern, but it has been overwhelmingly met with people defending Jiraiya. I know you can call something or someone beautiful platonically, but do you really think Jiraiya, of all people, has the capability of doing that? I mean, when he first met Naruto, he asked him to permanently be in sexy jutsu while they were training. He also immediately folded the second he saw the woman Itachi was controlling lure Jiraiya away from Naruto. I mean, come on, it seems very intentional that he said Conan specifically that she was going to be a good-looking adult and he wanted to meet only her in the future. Not that way, but some little girl that could do origami. I'm pretty confident in this one based off of Jiraiya's past. Quick note about Itachi, though. When Jiraiya comes back to the hotel room, the girl is knocked out. For some reason, Jiraiya realizes that it was a genjutsu. But why would she be unconscious after being released from it? When Rain was broken out of genjutsu by her teammates, she stayed conscious, and so did Naruto. When Chiyo and Sakura broke him out of Itachi's own genjutsu, so I guess for another meme theory, you could say Jiraiya roofied the girl and then tried to play it off. A more serious theory would be that Itachi busted the genjutsu on purpose and either she fell asleep as part of the genjutsu or just fell asleep after being broken out of it. And then Jiraiya took her back to that hotel room to question her. It's really odd that she went unconscious. 
I'm going to bet this was Itachi's doing to set up a reason for them to flee. And we have completed the third tier of Naruto Mystery Iceberg. Now let's dive down to the fourth tier, which will have more mysterious secrets and theories. Sasuke destroyed Madara's corpse. One topic that's rarely discussed in the Naruto community is the fate of Madara Uchiha's remains. During the Fourth Great Ninja War, Madara was brought back to life and fought against the Shinobi Alliance. After being defeated by Naruto and Sasuke, he was sealed away by Kaguya. But what happened to his body after that? It's unclear, but given the potential danger of his corpse being used for nefarious purposes, it's unlikely that anyone wanted it to remain intact. It's probable that Sasuke, who had a personal vendetta against Madara, was the one tasked with disposing of the body, possibly through a form of cremation. Whether he did it alone or with help, it's highly likely that the body was completely destroyed to prevent Madara from being resurrected again. Itachi stole the Totsuka blade and Yata mirror. Something I never see anyone bring up is how Itachi got both of these spirit weapons. All Susano users have unique weapons for their Susano, whether that be Sasuke's bow and arrow or Kakashi's Kamui shurikens. Itachi's weapons are different though, as there is some background to them, mainly the Totsuka blade, which was said to be related to Orochimaru's Kutsunagi blade. Orochimaru himself said he had been looking for it, and Zetsu remarked that he now realized why no one could find it. So how did Itachi find it? And where could it have been? Unfortunately, we know nothing directly about his backstory at all. We can presume it's not an Uchiha weapon since no other Uchiha, including Madara, ever had it. Orochimaru also was looking for it, so it might have been able to be used without a Susano. Or alternatively, Orochimaru just didn't have much intel on it because I'm not sure how he could have wielded such a large blade. Perhaps it can shrink to become handheld. It's weird that Itachi could find it and Orochimaru could not. Considering that Orochimaru left the village before Itachi did, you would think Orochimaru would be better at finding something like that. But I will say that Itachi's general knowledge is very underrated. Still though, if this wasn't a weapon possessed by previous Uchiha, I have no idea how Itachi could have found it before anyone else did. This theory is almost a complete shot in the dark, but it guesses that the blade was hidden by someone somewhere and Itachi took it. If I had to bet who it was, I would say the Sage of the Sixth Paths was the one who hid it. Jiraiya was scared of Orochimaru. This one refers to the head-scratching behavior we see from Jiraiya during Konoha Crush. We see him come back to the village to train Naruto and is told by Ebisu that Orochimaru is back, but he is hardly present during this arc. He doesn't join the fight until Hiruzen defeats the first two Hokage when he takes on a snake summoned on the outskirts of the village, so he's a bit late, to say the least. All the Jonin and Leaf had been told by Hiruzen to expect an attack by the final exams. So why would Jiraiya not be in the village for this? He even knows that Hiruzen would be targeted by Orochimaru because the first thing he did was ask where Hiruzen was. There's no evidence showing that he was ever debriefed on the expectation for the attack during the finals, but if he wasn't, that's on him for not staying in the know. So the whole situation just makes Jiraiya look very dumb or very apprehensive. This theory speculates that Jiraiya did not want to fight Orochimaru because that would be the only explanation for why he was late to the assault. The only other piece of evidence for this would be that the little known fact that Jiraiya and Orochimaru actually fought when Orochimaru left the village. We see them have a final valley-like situation where Jiraiya is way more damaged than Orochimaru. Presumably, Orochimaru beat Jiraiya here because Jiraiya says he failed that day. In the very next arc, we see Jiraiya and Tsunade fight Orochimaru and he's not scared in one bit in that fight. This is another long shot theory since we're at the bottom of the iceberg. So more than likely, I think Kishimoto just didn't want Jiraiya interfering with Orochimaru versus Hiruzen and didn't think it would be weird if Jiraiya showed up that late. Hiruzen killed Kinkaku and Ginkaku. We know that they were alive by the time of the third Raikage takes over because they recognize Daroi's identical black lightning tattoo. They should not be alive by the third great shinobi war because by then, Madara was basically bedridden. And Hashirama's wife, Mito Uzumaki, had also grown quite old before that war too. They also are reanimated young, so if they were old, they would have looked like Hiruzen did. It's unlikely that a cloud shinobi did it as based off their headbands. They did not go rogue, 
and none of the cloud shinobi that fought them said that their country turned on them. It's unlikely they died during the Second Great Shinobi War because there's no evidence that the cloud participated in it for that war. We only know that the fighting occurred in the rain village, which is sandwiched in between the stone, leaf and sand villages. As I said earlier, just some normal army could not take one of the brothers down, so either a giant army or a very powerful person or group did this. This theory proposes that during the First Great Shinobi War, Hiruzen led an army or a group to avenge Tobirama. This likely didn't happen in the Second Great War because there's no evidence that Kage fought during that. Whereas with the First Shinobi War, we know a bunch of Kages died in battle. And we have completed the fourth tier of Naruto Mystery Iceberg. Now let's dive down to the fifth and final tier, which will have more mysterious secrets and theories. Kakashi's mom was from Inuzuka clan. Kakashi has various summoning contracts with ninja dogs. In fact, throughout Naruto and Naruto Shippuden, he is shown working closely on missions with his ninja dogs. The theory that Kakashi's mom is an Inuzuka clan member stems from his having so many ninja dogs. In the show, typically, Inuzuka clan members have ninja dogs, so there may be Inuzuka clan DNA in Kakashi that allowed him to form strong bonds with these dogs very quickly. However, Kakashi's mother has never been mentioned in the series, so fans may never know the truth. Mitsuki is related to Toneri Otsutsuki. Since the beginning of Boruto, fans have shown surprise due to how similar Mitsuki looks to Toneri Otsutsuki. His origin has been explained as he is a clone of Orochimaru and grew up in a lab. Although it is not confirmed, it is possible that Orochimaru mixed some of Toneri's DNA with his DNA when creating Mitsuki. Mitsuki's hair is the same style and color as Toneri's, and his snake sage mode looks quite similar to Toneri's Tenseigen chakra mode. Orochimaru knew about Kara before everyone else. Although it has not been confirmed, this theory has some logic. Since Orochimaru is an experienced researcher and scientist who is always trying to gain more knowledge, it makes sense that he would meet Kara. He and Amado could have assisted Kara in his search for immortality. Meanwhile, he helped in the search for a perfect vessel. However, neither character has made any indication that this is so. Kakashi never used Mangekyo Sharingan since it reminded him of Rin. Since Kakashi awakened the Mangekyo Sharingan along with Obito when he witnessed Rin die, this theory makes a lot of sense. Watching his teammate and very close friend die by his hand would have been enough of an emotional trigger to awaken the Sharingan's next form. When we saw Kakashi using his Mangekyo Sharingan ability Kamui, he was struggling to use it. This somehow proves that he hasn't used his Mangekyo ability much. With this, I've covered the entire iceberg. I've explored a lot of ambiguous subjects related to Naruto and shared some fan theories. I'm excited to hear your take on them. Is there anything I missed? I encourage you to share your own theories in the comments section. Let's get a discussion going. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content. Don't forget to leave a comment if you have something to add. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you all in the next video. This is VerseTube signing off.